In the previous video, we saw the reaction of acid chloride with two different reagents. One is lithium aluminum hydride and the other is a much more bulkier sterically hindered lithium tri-tert butoxy aluminum hydride. And we saw how we got two different products in this case depending on the reactivity of our reagents, correct? Now this question that we are going to discuss in this video is also quite similar and essentially deals with the selectivity or the reactivity of our reagents, okay? So let's quickly look at the reaction now. So here again we have a very similar situation, we are treating the same starting reactant, another acid chloride but with two different organometallic reagents. One as you can see of course is a Grignard's reagent and other is an organo copper reagent also commonly called Gilman's reagent. Now the common thing between these two reagents is, yes you guessed it right, the nucleophilic R group. Here you have R MgCl, so here the reactive species or the nucleophile is R- which is our vinyl group and here again we are getting a nucleophilic R- group that can attack our acid chloride. So looks like both of them are giving the same nucleophilic species, so do we get same product or different product here? Well, that would depend on how reactive or not reactive our reagents are. Let me tell you, one of these reagents is a lot more reactive than the other. So I am going to let you pause the video here and see if you can figure out which among the two is more reactive, okay? And don't worry, here is a clue for you to figure this out which is electronegativity. Look at the electronegativity of carbon, magnesium and copper and see if you can figure out which among the two would be more reactive, okay? So please pause the video here. Alright, so if you look at the electronegativity values, you can see that the electronegativity of carbon is 2.55 and that of magnesium is 1.31 and that of copper is 1.9. So based on these values you can clearly see that the carbon-magnesium bond has a much greater electronegativity difference as compared to the carbon-copper bond in Gilman's reagent. And as a result of this, the CMG bond is a lot more polar as compared to the CCU bond here. And what is the consequence of this? Because copper is less effective at polarizing this bond, CCU bond, we get a less reactive carbon nucleophile as compared to the carbon nucleophile of our Grignard reagent. As a result, Gilman's reagent is a lot more selective as compared to Grignard reagent. Now this is similar to a previous question that we saw in the immediate last video. Well, similar, not exact because here the decrease in reactivity of this reagent as compared to lithium aluminum hydride is not because of electronegativity difference but because of the steric hindrance and the bulky groups being substituted in the place of hydrogen here, correct? If you remember, steric hindrance or the bulkiness of a substance is what decreases the reactivity in this case as compared to the electronegativity difference or the different metals being used in these two reagents. So the similarity is only with respect to the decreased reactivity in one case as compared to the other. Alright, let's get back to our question here. So now that we have confirmed that Gilman's reagent is a lot less reactive and a lot more selective than Grignard reagent, let's see how the selectivity translates into our products. So let's look at the first reaction of our acid chloride with our Grignard reagent. So the first step is obviously the nucleophilic attack of our R- here. It attacks the carbonyl carbon and the pi electrons get delocalized onto our electronegative oxygen atom, giving us this intermediate. Now here the C double bond O gets restored because the Cl or chlorine is a very good leaving group and it leaves as chloride ion. So the pi bond gets restored here and chlorine gets eliminated and this gives us a ketone. Now if you look at this ketone, you can see that the pi electrons here delocalize with the carbonyl group, correct? And this means that overall the delta positive charge of this carbon is less. But because we have excess of Grignard reagent here, the reaction will not stop here. For the Grignard reagent, this is still a very viable reactive site. So the next step is again another nucleophilic attack on the carbonyl carbon. And this gives us an intermediate which on acidic hydrolysis finally gives us a tertiary alcohol. So as you can see, the acid chloride gets reduced all the way to tertiary alcohol when we react it with excess of Grignard reagent. Now let's see what product we get when we react acid chloride with Gilman's reagent. So the first step is obviously the nucleophilic attack of R- onto our carbonyl carbon and this gives us our intermediate and here again the elimination of chlorine takes place. 
giving us our ketone just as we saw in the previous case but the interesting thing is that the reaction stops here the reaction does not proceed any further to give us a tertiary alcohol now even if we had excess of gilman reagent here the reaction would still typically result in the formation of a ketone and will not reduce further to give us an alcohol now this is because of the lower reactivity and greater selectivity of gilman's reagent that prevents it from over reacting with the acid chloride to give us an alcohol and instead selectively stops at the ketone stage and this is why the reduction of acid chloride using gilman's reagent becomes a very important method for the synthesis of ketone just as we saw in the last case where the reduction of acid chloride with a highly sterically hindered reducing agent like lithium trited butoxy aluminum hydride would give us the corresponding aldehyde so the thing is it's these nuances that make organic chemistry exceedingly interesting and of course sometimes challenging as well i mean it's always easy to recall that okay you know acid chloride with lithium aluminum hydride would give us an alcohol or acid chloride with uh, gilman's reagent would give us a ketone or uh, with this particular reagent we get an aldehyde but what happens why are we getting all of these things it can be the reason can be as simple as steric hindrance in this case or as simple as the lower electronegativity difference between carbon and copper metal so i hope you can understand how fun it is to look at these things instead of just trying to remember how a particular product is formed depending on you know the different kind of reagents and yeah that's it i hope you had fun we'll see you in the next video